Hey guys, welcome back. It's Rowena. It's Felicia. And we're getting to that time of year when winter's rolling around or blowing around. <laughs> and we're all collectively wrapping ourselves on our blankets, burrito style, from our bed until we go out the door because we just want to protect ourselves from the Arctic winds. Our skincare also needs a little bit of a switcheroo from, you know, hot, humid climates to winter. And it needs way more protection. And if you guys have seen our moisturizer video, you'll know what happens is transepidermal water loss, which is basically where the moisture in our skin starts to evaporate and flutter away into the atmosphere during the winter and colder months. So we have to restore that moisture back in with the skincare products that we use. So today we've teamed up with Ulta to share with you beauties our winter skincare routine to cure us of the winter blues and our winter skincare concerns because yeah. we all have a lot of those. So Ulta is having a huge event called the Love Your Skin event and they're gonna feature a bunch of amazing epic steals of deals. So how it works is every day from January 6th to 26th, you'll get a lot of these products for 50% off. And then you can also get things under $10 people like the Mario Badescu. So pretty sweet deal if you ask me. And without further ado, let's get started on the essentials of our skincare products to fight that dry flaky mess that is our skin. Yeah, because let's be real, the only thing that should be flaky is a croissant. <laughs> Now let's get into the video. <laughs> Starting with cleansers. Remember what we said in our how to properly cleanse your face video where if you don't properly cleanse your face of the day's nasties, oils, grimes, no matter what product you apply afterwards, it's not gonna properly do what it's supposed to do. So no matter what time of the year it is, cleansing is very important. So the reason why our skin is more particularly dry, scaly, and fish-like in the winter months is because the humidity levels in the air actually drop. And then you're also fighting things like the cold, harsh winter airs outside, as well as heaters. And so everything is just like pulling moisture out of your skin. With cleansers, you wanna find ones that aren't too stripping of the natural oils on your skin, which is the barrier that protects you from like environmental factors. So the best cleansers to use if you are feeling a little too stiff and dry are gentle non-foaming cleansers, creamy ones, cream cleansers. Milky. Yeah, those are great. And also make sure when you're washing your face, try your best to use lukewarm water because I know it's cold, you wanna use water that's like, oh, so warm, and then yeah. warm up your face. But then the warm and the hot water actually strips natural oil, so it'll make it even more dry. And because it's winter, you wanna stay away from traditional soap ingredients like sodium lauryl sulfate or even things like overusing um, alpha hydroxy acids and like BHAs but that's not to say you shouldn't use it because chemical exfoliation is a really good just like lower the amount of times you yes. do it per week or just don't overdo it in general so here are some of our suggestions that we've been loving for the winter months the first one is the confidence in a cleanser by it cosmetics so this one has been like a game changer for you recently, right? Yes, and she was so excited for me to try. She's like, you need to try, you need to try. I'm like, okay, why don't you try yourself? <laughs> no, because when I was looking it up, it's developed by dermatologists. They researched Plastic it. surgeons. Oh, plastic surgeons, that's I right. was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so they know a little thing about aesthetic. And it also took them eight years to perfect and research like what goes into it, the ingredients and how it's used. I can feel the history of the eight years, <laughs> like the blood, sweat, and tears that went into the eight years because I've never used a cleanser like this before. So it says it's a skin transforming, hydrating, cleansing serum. And the cool thing or what sets this apart is they say you can wash your face and after washing it, you don't need to moisturize because it is so moisturizing. Yeah. I feel that, but I, I feel like I still You work. still, yeah, yeah, probably want to do that. When you emulsify it, it turns into this very creamy texture that's buttery, velvety without being thick and heavy. So many adjectives. Yeah. Does it so froth? Nice. Minimally. Okay. If you guys already have dry skin like me, it's imperative to double down on hydrating and moisturizing ingredients 
for the winter. It has hyaluronic acid, which is super hydrating, soothing oatmeal, anti-aging hydrolyzed collagen, and ceramides. And in terms of ingredients, it's got all the good stuff like tea tree leaf oil, turmeric root extract, camilla leaf extract, grapefruit, and lavender oil. Is this not awesome or is this not awesome? <laughs> so this is usually $24, but for the skin event, it's gonna drop down to $14. Experience what velvety butter feels like on your face. So the one that I've been using, if you have like oilier skin so she has dry which is why it's more like rich and stuff I've been using the Bosha charcoal cleanser it has activated charcoal powder to draw out all the impurities and dirt and excess oils but this charcoal cleanser also warms up with a slight heated feeling as it makes contact with the skin so it kind of like helps to open up the pores so it's able to get out the dirt and oil and other impurities that cause acne but also vitamin C and glycolic acid to help with refining the skin's texture. I've also used this with their Bosha like puff you know there's like black puff thing it's a very soft physical exfoliator instead of using like a face towel. I always like charcoal. Charcoal is one of those all-star ingredients for like people with oily acne skin because it helps. Yeah, like a magnet. I just feel like it like <laughs> yeah. Honorable mentions include First Aid Beauty's facial cleanser. Mm, this one's really good. I used this in the winter when I first moved here three years ago and it's just one of those like my skin Every is not used to yeah. this. <laughs> what is happening? Help me, help you. I feel like First Aid Beauty is really good for sensitive skin. The whole line is designed for skin. And it's like skin. uber hydrating. For yeah. The whole line. As well as the Derma E Nourishing Rose Cleansing Oil and the Dermalogica Pre Cleanse. Okay, cleansing done. Now, what's the next step? Toner! <laughs> As we've mentioned in our toner video, I mean, we've made a video on every <laughs> single step, so it's pretty helpful if you need little extra information on each of these. But basically toners are there to add moisture back into the skin and it's also there to help balance your pH levels because some cleansers, as we said before, if it's too stripping, it'll actually move your skin's pH level to a more acidic level. And then when you start toning and moisturizing, it brings it back to a neutral state, which is where like your serums and moisturizers actually work. And toners also help remove any extra nasties and you know makeup grime that you forgot or not missed. A, yeah, especially the neck. I always find like when I wipe here, I'm like, how is makeup still here? Mine's always around the yeah the perimeters. Yeah. So toners are pretty straightforward. They just add an extra layer of hydration to your already thirsty skin. Mm -hmm. And another reason why they're great is because if you, when you do apply toners and your skin is damp, it allows these products to absorb a lot better into your skin because damp skin is far more permeable than dry skin. Mm -hmm. Like a sponge. Like a dry sponge. Think about like what you wanted to help it with. The active ingredients will like determine which one you pick. All right, so for toners, we have some really great options for you because they're both under $15. <laughs> um, so the one that I've been using is the Mario Badescu Glycolic Acid Toner. So with toners, I find I kind of like jump and skip around different ones depending on, you know, how my skin is feeling. Yeah. And what it does is help, you know, shed the dead skin that's on the very surface of your skin and helps reveal the like younger, fresher ones. And glycolic acid is pretty like safe to use, especially for those of you who are just getting into AJs. So this toner has 2% glycolic acid and grapefruit extract, which helps with dull and congested skin. And it also helps with reducing hyperpigmentation, which might come from any acne scarring or things like that. Teacher Phil, I have a question. Vap. <laughs> <laughs> what if your cleanser has AHA ready and your toner has AHA and then serums and oh. is that okay or actually it's so okay it depends on the concentration but it also depends on how your skin reacts to it so like your cleanser is fine if it has HA or BHA because you wash it off mm -hmm. so that's like step one and it helps to like get down into the pores mm -hmm. toner and serum is also fine to have like HAs because it includes so many different types of acids right oh, yeah it's so usually like, like a blend of AHAs yeah and some are a little bit more stronger than others so if I have like a strong AHA then and I won't use like every single step with it. But I mean, it's fine to use it because it's basically in every single step yeah. anyway. <laughs> okay, thank you. So this is normally 18, but on January 25th, you can get this for $9. $9. Yes. If you guys have been wanting to try Mario de Badescu, this is a great toner. And for me, I've been trying this big boy. <laughs> <laughs> so huge. 
like just for size <laughs> reference. If you use that every day for like a decade. <laughs> yeah. So this is Clinique's Clarifying Lotion, which is a twice a day exfoliator. So there's witch hazel with salicylic acid and sodium hyaluronate. Mm. So it is like a bougie version of Thayer's, <laughs> if you guys like Thayer's. Yeah, it's also alcohol free and it's also a huge bottle. But what I find interesting is that like the witch hazel is one of the top five ingredients. So it's it like- the second ingredient. Yeah, there's like yeah. a lot of that. It's water and then witch hazel. And then the um, BHA, which is the salicylic acid, must only be a little bit. It doesn't say how much because if you can use it twice, it should be yeah. quite scent like yeah. gentle. Yeah, it works like how a good toner should work. Like it, makes it does it when it's clean, does. and then it makes it feel your skin, your face feel very refreshed. Mm. So this is twenty five dollars, but on January twenty six, it'll be twelve dollars and seventy five cents. I didn't realize how affordable toners could be. Like yeah. they're much cheaper than serums. Yeah, just mostly water. <laughs> Yeah, it is mostly water, actually. H2O. <laughs> yeah. All right, serums. To recap what they are, it's basically a dose of highly concentrated active ingredients that are designed for specific skincare concerns like lightening, hyperpigmentation, acne, hydrating. They're typically found in like little bottles because it is so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a very, very powerful crunch. Yeah. And since there's so many different types of serums out there to target different, very, very different skincare needs, mm -hmm. we're just gonna jump into our favorites and the ones that we've been using. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have very dry skin. And in the winter time, if I wanna hydrate, I'll use the Body Shop Drops of Youth Concentrate. I've been going through bottles of this Lackis Nazi. True that, because every time you bring in serums, it was like empty and now yeah. it's like replenished, it's a new, one. new bottle. And I actually learned something. So when I first started using this, I would put mm. four drops on my face mm -hmm. and then smooth it out. Mm -hmm. But then I realized after doing research <laughs> that a little goes a, a long, long way. way. So now I'm like, oh, okay. Too much. This concentrate is infused with three plant stem cells and leaves skin feeling instantly smoother and replenished with moisture. It's quick absorbing and non-sticky and it helps with tightening pores, makes the skin feels bouncier and the lines appear smoother. So Drops of Youth to me is just a very reliable friend mm. who does what it's supposed to. It doesn't really go above and beyond and that's not a bad thing, but it's like something that I can always come back to that I know will help my skin come back alive if it so is it's just struggling. like one of those serums that it's like a no-brainer, mm -hmm. and when you don't need anything in particular, but you just need a serum. It's very it's hydrating strong. and moisturizing, though. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the Innisfree green tea extract. Mm. It's a little similar. And if I want to lighten or brighten my skin, I actually like using the wintertime. I know you cannot relate, <laughs> but I like using wintertime to lighten or brighten my skin because summertime is like you're so exposed to the oh, sun, yeah. and then wintertime, the sun is not out as much and you tend to spend zero time outside. Mm. So I'll use products like the Murad Rapid Age Spot and Pigment Lightening Serum to help my freckles just, you know. Subside. Yeah, go in the cave for a bit, <laughs> <laughs> hide for a little bit. This has 2% hydroquinone, which is a pigment lightening ingredient that doctors actually prescribe most. But this Mirad serum formulates it at the highest level available without prescription. It'll help line dark spots, sunspots, and age spots, and even uneven skin coloring like hyperpigmentation. There's also glycolic acid to lift away dead cells that cause dull looking skin. So this is usually $72, but on January 12th, you can get the Murad Serum for $36. Oh, what a deal. So I actually really like Murad products because they have um, different lines as well. And I tried the blue one. So like this orange one is for brightening, lightening. lightening. Um, but they also have the blue one, which is for like acne problematic skin. And it like really worked when I was breaking out. But anyway, just thought I'd mention that. So the one I've been using is the Bare Minerals Skin Longevity Vital Power Infusion. So this one I feel like is a little bit more lightweight, like watery compared to more like gel consistencies, like the one that you yeah. just mentioned, both of them. The ingredients are niacinamide, which is like an all-star ingredient for any skin type. It brightens, it hydrates, it's 
nourishing. That's all the things. Yeah. So my skin is very sensitive, and so after using incorporating this into it while I was trying it out, it didn't break out or it didn't get inflamed. So one, that's like the best sign ever because my skin will immediately react, and you use it day and night. And it's also got their like all star ingredient is this patented long life herb extract. This one is normally thirty eight dollars, and it's nineteen um, on January thirteenth. So yeah, those are the two serums. Hopefully by now you have a pen and paper out to mark down yeah. these numbers on your calendar. Because seriously, it's like 50% off. Honorable mentions for serums include the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Hydrating Serum and the Vichy Mineral 89 Face Serum with Hyaluronic Acid. <laughs> Now moving on to moisturizers, which is probably the most important step for your winter skincare routine because it does everything from deliver moisture and hydration into your skin. It also locks it into the skin as an occlusive and it also softens the skin. So it's like basically you really need moisturizers <laughs> in the winter. Some tips for finding some moisturizers. You should probably step up from using gel or more lotion liquidy like moisturizers, just something that's a little thicker and creamy. But remember that just because something is super thick and super creamy does not mean that it's going to be the best for your skin because mm. there are still differences between moisturizers. So look more so into active ingredients mm -hmm. that will deliver hydration and nourishment for your skin. Because even though we all have different skin types, things like dryness, dullness, and like flaky dehydrated skin is actually a skin condition and it comes from not moisturizing enough. Hydrating ingredients to look out for include ceramides, which is the glue that holds your skin cells together and helps your skin cells hold on to moisture. Glycerin, which is a humectant which helps in absorbing water from the air and retaining it in the skin to keep it supple and moisturized, as well as hyaluronic acid, which is also a humectant. If you guys have been watching our skincare series, you know how many times, like we always say that hyaluronic acid can hold up to a thousand times its weight in water. Because our bodies actually produce hyaluronic acid naturally, it doesn't just like retain moisture, it actually draws moisture from the air. So the first moisturizer that I've been using recently, maybe for the last couple of months, has been from Skin Iceland. I've only learned about this brand very recently, but what I used first was this spray moisturizer. And at first I thought, spray moisturizer, it's like a gimmick or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why do I want moisturizer all up in my hair and everything? But it's actually very velvety and moisturizing. Can you layer it? Yeah, so like sometimes I'll spray one layer and then, you know, like pat it in or rub it in. And then I'll just like go in again because the mist makes it a little bit more fine. And so just depending on how much you need, you just like keep putting it on until it feels nice and hydrated. And I feel like especially at night, I always moisturize at least double than what I do in the morning yeah. because I just find that in the morning, if I don't moisturize more, it's just very dry. So I've been using this Ultimate Nourish rice overnight mask, spa mask from Kors RX, and this is mm. amazing. It's a sleeping mask, but I think the older formulation is a little creamier and thicker. It goes on very smoothly and it kind of blends. It's actually like very light. Water. Yeah. It's super hydrating. It lines because the rice, um, I think it's made of 65% rice extract. 68.9. 68.9% rice, which helps brighten your skin. I use this as the last step of my routine after moisturizing. I read online, I just read through a bunch of reviews. You could just use this as a moisturizer on its own in the daytime and at night. Normally when I wear a sleeping mask, I wear it after serum. Because it's already like locking it in. So you can use overnight sleeping masks. Like whenever you feel dehydrated, you can use that as your moisturizing step at night. Like save me. Yeah. Honorable mentions include the Body Shop Drops of Youth Youth Cream, as well as the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream Moisturize Your Super Cream, and the Clinique Moisture Surge Intense Skin Fortifying Hydrator. Eye cream is next and should not be forgotten because our precious little sensitive eye area has actually the thinnest skin on our body. It's almost a quarter of the thickness compared to anywhere else on our body. And so we gotta take care of it because it also doesn't have oil glands and so it can't <laughs> replenish and moisturize it's like itself. The thing 
able to get the driest the quickest in the yeah. winter time. And that's why we get like wrinkles, fine lines and things like that first under the eye. Okay, we're gonna do a whole video on eye creams very soon. <laughs> and the thing with that is you can actually just use a moisturizer and mix it or dilute it with a very plain moisturizer that doesn't have active ingredients and it becomes an eye cream. Because if you look at it, the active ingredients are essentially the same as a moisturizer. It's just diluted and you're paying a little bit extra for it. But that's not to say you shouldn't moisturize your eye with an eye cream. It's just like, if you find one that helps, then use it. If not, don't lose your hair over finding one specifically. For an affordable option, going back to Mario Badescu, this is the Hyaluronic Eye Cream. And it's like a no fuss moisturizing eye cream that is not too thick where it can cause you like milia, mm -hmm. which is where it kind of clogs the pores around your eye. And, and it turns you... into these like white things that yeah. are not white heads that you actually need to get a needle to poke or yeah. to go to like the dermatologist for them to extract yeah. it for you. I put it under the eyes and it's not good for like dark circles or puffiness or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's mainly for nourishing. But one tip is that you can actually Actually apply your eye cream put it onto like a spoon and then use the spoon to like slowly glide ah, over your eye and that's like yeah the metal buds that you're paying ah. for so it's like DIY version but when it comes to eye creams just like make sure you at least moisturize it with something that's not too heavy and then I'll like start off under here and then anything left I'll just like spread it all over the eye and it's best to use this finger yeah, your, your ring finger because it's the weakest. It's like the perfect the pressure. Yeah, and yeah, so for winter time, eye cream, as long as it's hydrating, as long as it's moisturizing, as with every other step of the <laughs> yeah. routine, oh, you're golden. It was 18 and it's nine and you can get it on January 14th. But another thing that I want to mention is the Dr. Brandt No Baggage Eye Cream. That was actually like crazy for me when I first used it because it's this weird orange color and it's kind of got this silicon texture and it, I thought it was like going to be really thick, but it like instantly makes you feel awake. I'm alive! It's like rubbing Burt's Bees around your eyes. Yeah, don't do that. But also if you're looking for other ones, there's the Clinique All About Eyes and the First Aid Beauty 5-in-1 Eye Cream H Delay. Next is facial oils. Remember, Facial oils don't hydrate and moisturize like a moisturizer would. So they're two very, very different things. Moisturizers sink deep into your skin while oils just kind of sit on top mm. and keep your skin nice and protected and smooth and glowy. Because it is an emollient, so it does have that skin softening property. If you're finding that your normal moisturizer isn't doing the trick, you can look for a facial oil because facial oils can replenish dehydrated skin because it's able to deliver vital fatty acids and seal in in moisture. If you're still dry after moisturizing and if you need that extra hydration, you can also mix your facial oils like one to two drops in with your typical moisturizer yeah. and then apply it like that. So what I've been using is the Dermalogica Phyto Replenish Oil. It's really cool because it works in three steps to strengthen, hydrate, and shield your skin from outside elements. So the Camila and Tamano oil helps restore the skin's natural barrier. So this is ideal for daily use for anyone who has normal to dry skin. If I feel like my skin is very parched and it's in desperate need of some TLC, mm. I'll put it on or just almost every other day. And then the days in between, I'll use something like either a sheet mask or mm. a face mask or something like the overnight sleeping mask from Cosrx. Yeah. So same for me. In the winter months, I've been using two actually. I mean, they probably do the same thing. <laughs> Both of the ones that I use are rosehip. The first one is the Julep Boost Your Radiance Reparative Rosehip Seed Facial Oil. So I really love this oil because if you look at the ingredients, rosehip oil is the first and then it's shea butter, bergamot fruit oil, and then lastly, vitamin E. Vitamin E actually helps with the absorption of rosehip seed oil and it also protects your skin from things like free radicals and antioxidants. And rosehip oil is great for all skin types, even acne prone, oily skin, but especially dry skin because it helps to reduce fine lines caused by dry Dryness. And then the bergamot oil helps with brightening the skin and is a natural antiseptic. Let's do a smell test. Since they're both, Since they're both <laughs> rose hip oil. Okay, so that's I just one. smell your breath. <laughs> <laughs> that's good too. It smells like um like citrusy. It smells, it smells very citrusy. Oh, maybe that's the bergamot. This smells like dirt. So oh no, it smells like fresh cut grass, not dirt. It mm. smells like fresh cut grass. So this one is like really yellow 
But the thing is, I think because this has vitamin E as well as bergamot oil, so it's not pure, but this one is like pure. pure. I put like two to three drops of this on, spread it all over the face and the neck, make sure, and you're good to go. So also, just remember, anyone can use facial oils. It's not just dry skinned peeps. <laughs> Especially for the winter time. So the Julep is normally $36, but you can get it for $18 on January 19th. Bing, bing, bing. So if it were nighttime, facial oils would have been your last step. But if it's the daytime, Sunscreen will be Even your last in step. the winter. Yeah, even in, especially in the winter because while you may be indoors for the whole day, while the sun might not be out, that doesn't mean the UVA and the UVB rays aren't raging full force outside because they penetrate through the clouds and all of that. Mm -hmm. You just don't see it as like, bright and as, shiny. A, as in sunlight, mm -hmm. but the rays are still there. So it's very, very important, especially if you use exfoliating chemical oh, yeah. products in your skincare routine, AHA, BHA. Yeah. Anything because your like skin that. is like so sensitive. Yeah. If you use it at night, like chemical exfoliators, during the next day, be sure to hit that sunscreen. So the Shiseido Urban Environment Oil UV Protector. But when I first moved to New York, the first year, the first winter, this was all I used. Mm. So I think oh. it's made for the city. For I like feel like it's anti-pollutant. Probably a marketing. And I love this because it glides on. Wow, it's so watery. It's so watery and it just kind of like melts into your skin. Oh yeah, dang, yeah. that's so thin. So compared to the Korean sunscreens that I've been loving, I feel like Korean formulations are more, they're th a little thicker, but then they also Dissolve. blend very nicely. It really depends what you want. This one has a lighter. This one's definitely. Fluid, like very fluid yeah. consistency. 72 SPF and you have the, and then. Mm. Moral of the story, very important to hydrate, moisturize, and apply sunscreen. You don't even notice your skin is dry until you put makeup on and you're like, what is this flaky business? <laughs> so actually, a tip is to, like, before you go to bed, have a cup of water. Yeah. Or like, yeah, drink one before you go to bed and then just have it there. There's a lot of lifestyle tips too, like don't share with water that's too hot. Mm. Make sure your, like, the temperature in your home or your apartment is toned down to, like, the lowest you're able to for you to be like mm. relatively comfortable because yeah. if it's too hot, it is gonna be very drying. Yeah. And just definitely hydrate from the inside and out. Yeah. And like one of the ones that we both highly recommend is you get a humidifier yeah. because that restores moisture in the air and things like hyaluronic acid and things will absorb it into mm -hmm. your skin. So if you guys haven't already like written down the dates for these deals, we'll um, link it everything down below. Yeah, it's all below and it's from Jan 6 to 26. So yeah, pick up some like skincare deals because 50% will be no longer. <laughs> so if you have any other questions about like skincare routines or like building up a skincare regimen, make sure you leave that below if you have any questions about that. And we'll see you in the next week's video. Bye.